Now, in this session, we do like to give a little bit of an update around some of the industry changes uh, that are coming. Uh, often, I will also talk about new releases. Uh, we've got that extra benefit of having Bridget on the call today. She's going to steal my thunder. I'm going to hand all the new release stuff over to her. Uh, and I'm sitting in anticipation waiting for that session. This is the boring bit. Bridge has got the most exciting bit. So I want to kick through this fairly quickly. Of course, some of this will, uh, will apply to some of you. Others, it won't apply at all. So we'll make that fairly quick. Uh, we have seen a lot of legislation, regulation changes in Australia. Uh, I'd like to suggest that Australia is probably more of a nanny state than New Zealand. Uh, but, you know, some of the New Zealanders out there might argue uh, payment times reporting scheme is one of those pieces of new uh, regulations that have come in. It's been introduced by the Australian government to essentially provide a little bit more transparency in terms of how larger business and larger government enterprises are man managing uh, the payment terms with their smaller business suppliers. Um, it is a good initiative. Uh, you'll see that there actually is a portal that's available uh, where small businesses can look at the performance of larger organisations and hopefully make some, in, some informed decisions uh, in terms of how they deal with larger businesses. Um, this is a new feature supported within Advanced 2022.1. Uh, if you do have a turnover in excess of 100 million, uh, you, you do need to provide that reporting. Uh, so do reach out to your business partner for more details. Security of Payments Act, another piece of wonderful Australian legislation um, and really a, a bit of a bit of an example of that groundswell of activity we're seeing both in the Australian construction industry but also in the New Zealand construction industry around legislation and regulations to bring uh, further transparency and further um, further governance around this industry. Security Payments Act is a state-based legislation that's about managing the payment process between uh, construction companies and their contractors. In essence, it formalises the process for making payment claims and for that construction organisation to either agree with that payment claim and pay that amount in full on the due date or actually provide a payment schedule for that contractor. The details, what that payment, uh, what, they, what payments they're willing to pay, why it might differ from the claimed amount and what that schedule of payments looks like. Uh, it is supported in the MIB Advanced Construction Edition 2021.1 or later. Uh, through an enhancement to the bills and adjustments screen where you can actually produce a payment claim. Um, now, as Bridget talked to previously with Project Trust, some of the changes in the Queensland construction uh, industry, we are seeing significant changes uh, in the advanced construction edition. Lots of work being done around how we ensure that we meet those legislative requirements. Uh, we are expecting similar sorts of changes, both in New Zealand with upcoming legislation changes and also in other states within Australia. Uh, so if you are within that, indus within that industry, uh, pl please do keep yourself um, abreast of the latest changes from a regulation perspective and also what's co coming in terms of the product features to support you with those changes. Would you believe that e-invoicing was released back in 2019? Feels like a lifetime ago now. And something that hasn't really had a huge amount of, of attention probably as much as we would have expected. Um, in some respects, you might suggest that's been impacted by COVID. Uh, lots of things have slowed down over that period, but we're starting to see a bit of a groundswell of activity around organisations registering for e-invoicing and starting to hear more questions being raised uh, from users as to how they can adopt e-invoicing within MIB Advanced. Of course, the peephole framework has been adopted uh, and being supported by the Australian and New Zealand governments. Um, as a part of the Australian Digital Business Plan, we have seen uh, the Commonwealth mandate e-invoicing across all agencies. Uh, we're starting to see similar sorts of uptake within New Zealand. At our last user group, we did look at the numbers of businesses registered for e-invoicing. In March, that was 7,400. As of September, we're up to 9,900. In fact, when I did a bit of a refresh last night, uh, there's 10,193 businesses registered for e-invoicing in New Zealand. So we're starting to see that uptake in terms of interest around registering for e-invoicing. Uh, there's also some great information on the IRD site where they do update the e-invoicing report each month uh, to provide some details of registrations and e-invoices that are being received 
uh, across organisations that support the invoicing. Now, there are a number of service providers that have been accredited to support clients with e-invoicing requirements. Uh, we have seen the EDI bands take the front foot in providing early access e-invoicing support. Uh, if you currently use an EDI van uh, for your EDI requirements, uh, do reach out to them and have that conversation about whether they can support you for e-invoicing. Or we're going to hear from Bridget soon about a little bit more of what's coming up in terms of e-invoicing. Excited to hear that. Excited to hear you commit to some dates, Bridget. I struggled with uh, James uh, in the New Zealand session in Auckland, but I'm hoping you're going to give us a date and a time that we can expect that. No pressure. 